Happy Monday, NHL fans. Welcome back to Morning Cup of Hockey alongside Kobe Cohen. I'm Johnny Lazarus, and we are presented by Betway. If you're going to place a bet, remember to bet on Betway. Please play responsibly. Must be 19 years of age or older. We got a lot to get into on today's show. Kobe Cohen is back from Providence, where he did the NCAA tournament regionals. An incredible weekend of college hockey. We're going to get into that. We're going to talk about the playoff preview. We'll talk about the New York Rangers milestones from the weekend and a little bit of Austin Matthews scoring 60 goals. So, and we'll talk MVP races too. There's a lot to get into today. So much hockey over the weekend, NHL and college, both um, glued to the couch pretty much all weekend listening to Colby. But uh, how are you feeling, man? Busy weekend for you. I'm tired. It was a, uh, it was a late night, a much later night for me than normal. Um, those uh those weekends are always pretty tiring just because it's kind of a long week and then the double header on on the like the semifinal game mm-hmm. two doing two games of that magnitude is 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 mentally draining you you get done that and you feel like you just played a game to be honest just cuz your your brain has to just be like so stimulated for for basically like six straight hours um so I'm definitely tired today, um, but the game yesterday was was one of the best games as, as far as excitement factor goes, probably that I've ever done outside of, you know, national championship game that that goes to overtime last year. But I feel like I've done a lot of those NCAA tournament games that like weren't that close and and weren't that good a game. So uh, yesterday was was a was a really enjoyable game to do and and uh, an enjoyable game to watch. I mean, the whole weekend for me, I tuned into as many of the college games as I could. The one team I didn't really get to see play much was BU. Um, there were just a lot of games going on, and, and the BU RIT game wasn't very close. Um, you know, I was checking scores, trying to tune into which games were closer. But, you know, the Michigan. BU, you know what? Huh? The BU Minnesota game wasn't that close. Like, yeah. the score was close at times, but. I mean, BU just absolutely dominated 90% of that game. Lane Hudson and Macklin Celebrini probably, I mean, maybe their best game of the year for those two. And I mean, it, you know, not, there's probably only one team in the country that can handle those two. It's Boston College. So mm-hmm. um, those, those guys, those guys took care of business uh, this weekend. And, and, you know, it's, it's way more fun for me to have BU in the Frozen Four. I mean, obviously, like the, the last national championship they won i was a part of that team so um so many so many friends and and you know i've got one of their coaches as a former team is a former classmate the other jay pandolfo is a former teammate so it's just there's a there's a lot of different uh reasons why it's exciting for me to get them in there um for sure and for college hockey fans like i have no dog in this fight but to see bc versus michigan and BU Unreal. versus Denver in the semifinal, yeah. and knowing that, you know, no matter what this final is, it's going to be electric. Uh, yeah. This is probably one of the better Frozen Fours as far as the four teams that are in that I can think of in recent years as far as, like, the Blue Bloods of college hockey goes. But there was concern yesterday for BC. I mean, at, at a certain point, I was like, I don't know if they're going to pull this out. And yeah. Quinnipiac well, made you, one mistake. You texted me going into overtime. Like, you thought Quinnipiac was going to score. Yeah, you know, I thought they were playing better. Yeah, they did. I think they outplayed BC for a majority of the game last night. I really did. I'd say mm-hmm. maybe 65 to 70% of the game, um, five on five at least, Quinnipiac outplayed Boston College. But they've got those That's kids. That's how good that BC can, is. Yeah, look, they, they've they got those kids that can uh, can make plays. And, and um, you know, as far as those guys go, the, the, the big time – forwards and at, at Boston College look learned a couple things about them this weekend first Cutter Goche is ready to play in the NHL and probably ready to I don't want to say star in the NHL but I would say he's probably ready to you know be impactful right away mm-hmm. like he's that good um he really is uh the other thing that I learned is, is that Gabe Perot and Will Smith really need to probably stay another year in college. Like neither of those two kids are to me look ready to go and play on NHL teams, especially bad NHL teams. I know Perot well, at the Rangers is, yeah, is not, not a bad team, but, yeah. but he looks the furthest away from being ready. Gabe Perot. I mean, his skating got a little bit exposed this weekend. 
I think the physicality, I mean, when you see Gabe, he's like 160 pounds. It's mm -hmm. he's not ready for the NHL. Ryan Leonard to me looks like a kid who could be ready. If he stops flopping around so much, yeah. um, you know, he's clearly a little bit of a diver, which which guys in the NHL will have a field day on. But but he looks um he he looks to me to probably be the most pro ready of the three freshmen, you know, stud players at Boston College. But yeah, that game was dicey. Like um Quinnipiac had a game plan. They they played a one three one neutral zone. They forced turnovers. They broke the puck out clean. I mean, it was uh it was a clinic on if you have a chance to beat them, this is this is the only way. But then, you know, they get into a little bit of penalty trouble. Although the high stick on Perot was not a high stick. It was a total phantom. It was a total embellishment. The hit on Leonard that everybody thinks is shouldn't have been a penalty. I didn't necessarily have a major problem with him getting two minutes because he does make blindside contact with him, even though it's not it's not a massive style hit, which is why immediately I said there's no way this should be a five. Why are they reviewing mm -hmm. this? Reject him like no chance. But I, I was okay with it being a two minute penalty, like okay with it, even though you get puck first. Like that's what they're they're you can't really blindside contact in in hockey anymore. You know, mm -hmm. five six years ago it would have been a completely clean play. Nobody would have thought twice about it, but you know, the way the rules are written now, you know, I didn't have as much of a problem with that penalty, but terrible call on Drew Fortescue it was a makeup call. That was a goal that Jacob Quillen scored, who's a free agent, who's probably signing with an NHL team in the next 24 hours. Um, so it was kind of unfortunate that that the officiating was as bad as it was yesterday in, in such a big game. And I thought Quinnipiac played a perfect third period. They make one mistake. And BC puts it in the back of the yeah. Net. Colin, Colin Graf turned that, that puck, puck in, over, and yeah. BC comes down the other way, and Minetti and scores a, a beautiful yeah. shot. Um, yeah, it was, well, a guy it was good who's known for goal scoring too. You know, yeah, but I think um, I think Minetti has a lot more offensive ability than he's people good. realize. Yeah, I just he's don't good. think he he's gotten the opportunity. Um, New York Marines asking about he played the puck though. Yeah, like he did. He gets his stick on the puck, but then he kind of follows through. Um, and and he moves through that hit and and again because Leonard doesn't see him and it's from the side you're you're just opening yourself up to a penalty and look college officiating is bad these aren't pros they don't they're not full time referees these guys have other jobs so again I, I, that one just it didn't get under my skin as much as the Perot one which I thought was a was it was an unfortunate you know embellishment you know and. Uh, the Fortescue one, which was literally just a push, you know, and but you kind of see that every year with the officials in this tournament. I think they get overwhelmed by the moment. Um, and I think you start to see stuff like that. The day before our officials and our, our bracket were great. Like they were great. They let them play playoff hockey. Mm -hmm. it, it was actually really, really well done by them the day before. So I, I don't know what changed. I guess bigger network you know, bigger game, bigger moment. They, they and, let him uh, play later in the game though. And, like there you, were a couple but, of plays. Yeah. I get it. But, but you can't do that though. You've yeah. got to set a standard and then you've got to be, you got to have that standard for 60 minutes. That that's where these guys go wrong. I don't care how you call it tight or loose, have a standard and then ride that standard for 60 minutes. That's, that's all you can ask for as a player. All right, so we got two weeks till the Frozen Four. What is just your final takeaway from these regionals? We won't get into like any Frozen Four preview until it gets closer. Yeah. But hold on, let me know. just let me just address Jeremiah said I thought it could have been called interference. The high stick goal looked like a good goal on TV, not a good goal. He was one hundred percent above the crossbar. There was a goal. Um, oh, when, they, when the player kicked it to his stick and scored? The no, 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 no. Malone had a high stick that got oh, the waved first one off. That was called back. And, then, yeah, yeah. and then Greg Brown challenged it early in the game. And Jeremiah thinks that should have been a good goal. No chance. That was 100% not a goal. His stick was above the crossbar. There was no chance they were going to have conclusive enough looks at it. I even said on the broadcast, I thought that was a silly challenge by Greg Brown. Came back to bite him in the ass later because on the Quillen goal, there might have been a high stick, but he couldn't challenge it because he already used his challenge and was wrong. So then he would have got a penalty. So, you know, he kind of mismanaged that one a little bit, in my opinion. So um, anyways. Yeah. Do you have a final takeaway, though, from the regional? Just, you know, just I, the I mean, fact that we've got the big names, Michigan, yeah. Rutger McGrory, 
Brindley, Seamus Casey, who didn't play yesterday, but like this Frozen Four will have more NHL star power than I, I couldn't tell you the last yeah. time it had this many. I mean, we've seen Eichel in the Frozen Four and we've seen, you know, the CCM line with like Kyle Connor and, and we've seen like the North Dakota line with Schmaltz back in the day. But like here you've probably got every stud from the World Junior this you've year. You've got, Pretty you've much. got at least probably 15 to 20 guys who are probably going to be like big time NHL players playing in the frozen four this year. You never have that. You do not ever have that. So I was pumped that Michigan won. I mean, I think that they're a much better draw than Michigan state. Um, so I was really happy that those guys won. Cause I, I want Rutger McGroarty playing in, in a, on a big stage. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, Denver BU, like, you know, two historic programs, BC, Michigan. Like it just, it, it's the best frozen four. This will be my sixth frozen four. I'm calling eighth NCAA tournament and I, or ninth NCAA tournament and I've, or eighth, I think. And I've never seen it shake out this way. It's going to be unreal, but let's move on from college hockey for now. Let's get into our Parasso playoff preview, a new sponsor for the show. Presented by Parasso, the most complete choice for shaving and beard care. Made in Italy since 1948, Parasso has been a staple of Italian culture and barbershops globally for four generations. So get 15% off at parasso usacom with promo code HOCKEY15. That's all caps, HOCKEY15 at parasso usacom I'll be growing out my playoff beard. Uh, this spring. So I'm a little nervous. I've never had to take care of a playoff beer before. So um, I got like two weeks left until I got to shave it and kind of grow it from scratch. So if I can get any tips from anybody, probably Jeremiah, since <laughs> he is the sports we beard. And I do think we have uh, some gifts going Jeremiah's way from Parasso. Um, trying to work on that. But um, Kobe, let's get into the playoff preview right now because the well, let me just say one thing about pro Rasso. what i think we should do vic is throw that website in the chat just so everybody has it in the chat um just because you know copy and paste and exactly let's yeah. let's copy and paste it let's drop that in the chat and let's just make sure we we keep that in the chat so so if you do want to check out their products you can um, I do think that this whole sponsorship was inspired by Jeremiah. So uh, we got to we got to give a little lo love to our to our guy there. And, yeah, it'll be interesting to see your playoff beard. I will not be growing out a playoff mm -hmm. beard, but uh, but I will be enjoying um, enjoying the itchy, probably watching you sit there for the next few months, yeah. scratching your face. Going to be rough. I'll get one of those cool haircuts, though, with like the high fade and I'll like look like a, a badass maybe, but I got to go to the gym. Not and get more Johnny gym. Neckbeard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but let's talk about the two teams that dropped into wild card spots over the weekend, the Philadelphia Flyers and Los Angeles Kings. I mean, the Flyers to lose on home ice five to one on Saturday against the Blackhawks. It's getting close. And Colby, the schedule, the way it lines up, I mean, we could have a repeat of 2010 when the Rangers and Flyers had the last game of the year. Winner gets in. That could be the same thing for the Flyers and Capitals this year. They play each other in the last game of the season. They're both battling for that third spot in the Met. The Capitals own it right now. But this is going to come down to the wire. And the Flyers actually play tonight at home against the New York Islanders. If the Islanders win, they have two games at hand. I know it doesn't mean an automatic win. But this thing is getting closer and closer each day as we wind down here. What do you make of the Flyers? Are you, you losing hope? I didn't see the game Saturday, um, but I mean, they're on life support. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any, uh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, look, I, I think Sam Erson, you know, is, as being, he just, he hasn't shown that he's ready for this type of workload yet. Um, and I think that's, that's hurting them. I do wonder if uh, Fedotov is going to play tonight. I, I think people are really wondering about that. I mean, he doesn't even have to be good to save the puck. He's such a fucking Six monster. Foot seven. Yeah. I mean, he looks like he's standing in a mini net um, when he is, uh, you know, standing in his goalie equipment. It's like Megatron. So I, I don't think that they're done because they're still in a playoff spot. They still got a couple of points. Detroit is not exactly playing good hockey either. You know, although they do have Patrick Kane and, Excuse me. You good? They do. They do have Patrick <laughs> Kane, um, who is is 
trying to drag them into the playoffs, trying to make plays. I feel like Dylan Larkin, every time I look up, there's a highlight of him getting hurt. Yeah, every time. Um, Seriously. It's it seems like it's like every week. So well, he got hurt on Saturday and came back in the game and scored the tying. Goal. I know he came back and then yeah. he left again and then he came back. You know, he took that shot right on the knee I saw, which is like a pretty dead, uh, pretty dead feeling. But um mm-hmm. I think the Flyers are still going to hopefully find their way in, but like life support, I, I don't think they're going to, they're going to be in the division. Like I think they're a wild card team at this point, And that means they're wild card too. Um, Cause obviously they're not going to catch Tampa, but I, again, like you look at the other teams around them, like the Islanders stink. Like they, <laughs> what have they shown? Like, why do we think the Islanders are going to win any games here? I mean, sure. They'll win a couple, but yeah, they're, they're, they're not exactly lighting the world on fire the way that that they're playing either. So I'm, I'm certainly feeling nervous. I mean, the flyers, uh, they won those, those big games against like Florida. And I don't remember the Bruins maybe like 10 days ago. And like, that Mm -hmm. seems like an eternity ago that they won a good hockey game. Well, then they come out and lose four to one to Montreal and then five to one against Philly and back-to-back games. Their schedule though, so here's the thing. The Islanders and Flyers both have schedules where they don't re- – the only playoff team they're playing against is the Rangers. The Flyers have seven games left. I want to read their schedule out just to you know give you a little bit of a glimpse of what to look forward to here. They're home tonight against the Islanders. On Friday, they're in Buffalo. They play a back-to-back in Columbus. Then they play Montreal, the Rangers, the Devils, and the Capitals to round out the season. The Islanders, who have two games in hand, have that game tonight in Philly. Then they play the Blackhawks, the Blue Jackets. They have a tough game against the Predators at home on Saturday. Then they play the Rangers, Canadians, Rangers, Devils, Penguins. So the schedules aren't like, you know, that crazy here for both teams. You know, I'd say it's pretty evenly, I don't want to say soft, but uh, easy, I guess, for strength of schedule for both teams. But when the Flyers lose to Montreal and Chicago on back to back, like those should be. You know, at Listen, least that's why I always there. tell you these games for these teams that are not, you know, they're they're barely playoff teams. You, you they're not guaranteed wins. Like when they play San Jose and they play Chicago, like you 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 know, if the New York Rangers decide to lay an egg against the Chicago Blackhawks, they've got players like Panarin and Zibanejad and Kreider and Fox that can just whip, like skill them through a game. Right? They can just. They'll get a couple of plays from those players that will just be the difference, right? Where when the Flyers are doing it, it's it's a whole different look because they don't have those that type of firepower. So like they've got to show up and and play a certain style, and they're they're not doing that right now. And so that's kind of the difference. And that's why I always say like with these teams that are not good teams or or they're not really good threats. I get on you about this all the time. Games yeah. in hand, like almost means nothing in those situations because those teams are, they're 500 hockey teams. Basically, when you look at the loser point, some of them are under 500 yeah. hockey teams. So what makes you think they're going to go win six out of their last 10 or six out of their last 12? It, it's, it's a fool's errand. Well, I think tonight, is it safe to say whoever wins tonight's game between the two gets in? No, it's you not think safe so? to say. Like, I, no, I don't think so. Um, I don't think the Islanders are. No, I, I don't think it's safe to say the Islanders have inspired no confidence at any part of the season. Right. Like the Flyers have at least given some confidence. I, I would think Detroit would would be the team to find their way in because they have a guy like Patrick Kane and they have a guy like Dylan Larkin um, and to You know, if they could get some saves from Alex Lyon and company like you know, I, if anything, I think Detroit will find their way in o- over those teams. Like, I really do. Let's look up Detroit's schedule here for the remainder. So Detroit plays at Tampa. Then they're home against the Rangers, home against the Sabres, home against the Capitals, in Pittsburgh, in Toronto, home against Montreal, then in Montreal. Yeah, listen, it's all in inner division, not divisional, but inner conference no, but those, are, those aren't easy games, though. Yeah, not no, that I'm, not that there's any easy game, but their schedule of the three teams is definitely the hardest. Right. You know, so they're gonna have the biggest uphill climb, I think, here with the uh, eight games remaining. But yeah. again, you know, I'm happy but it's they, close. But but they seem to be playing good hockey. But th- look, this is why 
we cannot add more teams. We do not yeah. need a play a play in tournament. Like you see what these races look like at the bottom right now. And, you know, I think the West is different because Nashville played so well down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they look like an actual threat. But I mean, look, you, you've got these teams that are are barely above 500 when you really take into account the loser point. And you don't want teams that are that are barely 500 in the playoffs like that doesn't that should not get you in the playoffs. You know, like it just shouldn't. And we're officially saying the West is set, right? Like maybe the seedings aren't set in place of who's going to play who, but those eight teams. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think um, I, I I absolutely agree. And and New York Marine said the Flyers, the Islanders, and Detroit are all trying to play their way out of the playoffs. It it does uh, it 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 does you know seem that way. We've also got a couple of questions, Car- I'm just wondering here. I saw someone. Oh, Tommy D are Boston and Vancouver pretenders. Like, I don't think either of them are pretenders, right? I just, I like, I think Boston could win us. I think everybody thinks Boston is just going to lose first round of the playoffs. Like, I don't think that that's going to happen. I think the Bruins will win a round. Do I think they'll win two? It depends if they play uh, the Maple Leafs or not. Um, But I, I don't think they're as big a pretenders. Like, or paper tigers that people are making them out to be. I mean, paper tigers. I've never heard that one. They, they, they definitely like you look at who they have and how guys are playing. I mean, and they have the goaltending that they have. Like what, why couldn't they win around? They've won all season. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, w- but I do think if the Bruins don't win two rounds this year, if they don't win one round, I think their head coach and their general man, their general manager are gone. I think, Sweeney and Monty are out if they don't win the first round. I think if they lose in the second round, I think the I think Don Sweeney might be on the hot seat a little bit and maybe Monty too. Like I hear there's discourse in management in Boston. I hear Cam Neely is not happy and and you know does not like the way things are have been going. Um I hear you know, Don Sweeney's basically has to report into Cam Neely's office at 8.30 in the morning every time they lose, like, which is crazy to me. I mean, Don Sweeney has done a really nice job for a long time keeping this team in Boston really competitive. Um, so I want to say one thing, though, quick, like what I have, the gripe I have with like the pretender conversation, like if you ask me Boston on paper, is not as good nearly as what they've done all year long. I agree. Like, so, so how did so Charlie me, Coyle, Pavel Zaka, like yeah. those aren't like that's how you're stacking up down the middle. Like that's nowhere near as good as the Rangers stack up down the middle or so that's Carolina why, or yeah. Florida. A team like that, but I don't think you can call them pretenders when they're outperforming what they really have. Yeah, but paper. I think the the argument is they've got bailed out by goaltending a lot this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, David Posternak's going to score 60 goals this year. Like, no, he's, he's close to 50, but I don't excuse know me, it's 50, yeah. Yeah. 50 plus goals this year. He gets Matthews, 47 right now. Right. Sorry. No, I, I'm pretty sure McKinnon has 47. I don't know the exact number for pasta, but let me look. Pasta has 45. Okay. So he'll get 50 goals this year. Um, you know, he's such a threat. McAvoy can take over a game. Like they have stars. You know, lindholm has been so average for them this year. I think that's been a big problem. He just hasn't played that well. So um, somebody asked, what do I think between... Um, what do I think between if Boston plays Tampa? Um, well, I think I'm Tampa take, would... Tampa. I, I, me yeah. too. I think Tampa would win that series. I really do. I, I, uh, I just think that's one of the few teams that I think has an edge in goal over the Bruins, right? And I've had a lot on goaltending. Tampa was also very quietly one of the hottest teams in all of March. They went 9-1-1 in the month of March. They scored 4.18 goals per game, only allowed 2.45. Their power play was at a 30.3%, and their PK was at a 97% over 11 games. Like Tampa's playing a very well-rounded game right now. Pizza Sports Guy says, Charlie Coyle has a golden, always a boost. I'll do one better for you, Rocco. Charlie Coyle has two golden retrievers. Um, yeah. His golden retrievers are actually related from the same bloodlines as my golden. We got them from um, from the same breeder. Matt Grizzlick actually has Oliver's brother. Really? So 
His litter mate, no his way. name is Teddy, and and they're actually twins. Like they are identical looking. Um, they're brothers, and so much so that one time Matt Grizzly's girlfriend posted a photo on her story, and I I sent it to my wife, and I was like, that looks like Oliver, and she goes, Colby, that is Oliver. That's <laughs> our sofa and our house in Chicago. And what happened was was, and I messaged her you know, we all know each other. And I messaged her and she was like, Oh my God, like you must have sent this photo to Matt. Matt sent it to me and it ended up in my photos. And when I was posting pictures of Teddy, I, I didn't even realize that was Oliver. So, um, a lot of, a lot of degrees of separation actually. And I'll, I'll end this tangent in a second, but a mm -hmm. lot of the guys in the NHL get, get dogs from the same breeder in, in Maine. Um, they get a lot of goldens from this lady, like Patrick Sharp has one. It's a pretty long list. So, anyways, um, I, I I'll digress back to Tampa Bay. Yeah, I would take Tampa Bay in that series for sure. Mm -hmm. And if Toronto ended up with Tampa Bay at any point, I would take Tampa Bay over Toronto. That's a no-brainer for me. I was just gonna say, I think I'm taking Tampa in the first round, no matter who they play against. Yeah, <laughs> they I, always I just find think... a way to turn it up. They always do. I just, I just think the Bruins' best chance to win. Oh, there's one of my my patented yeah. uh, thumb yeah. bubbles that we don't know how they come <laughs> up, but I think, I think the 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 Bruins will be in good shape if they could play the the Maple Leafs in the first round for sure. Wait, say that again. I said the Bruins will be in good shape if they play Toronto in the first round. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, let's go into my favorite topic of the day. The New York well, hold Rangers. on, let's let's talk what? Austin Matthews because we just mentioned him, and then we'll talk John Jonathan right. Quick and the Rangers. So right. I, I haven't really watched much NHL this weekend, so yeah. I I didn't see. I saw some highlights of his goals and whatnot, but mm -hmm. Austin Matthews hit sixty goals in Buffalo, which looked like a home game for for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right? Did it you was watch? Loud. Did you actually, actually watch that loud. game? I tuned into a little bit of it, um, not the full game. There was a lot of hockey on. Uh, you know, Saturday had a had a huge slate, so um, only caught a little bit of this game. But man, every time Toronto is in Buffalo, it's it's insane. It's like it, it feels like you know the Ranger Islander rivalry when the Ranger fans took over Nassau Coliseum, like back in the day. That's kind of what it feels like. And I know Islander fans that are listening right now are going to shit on me for that, but like that's the reality. Like you look at a Buffalo game, there's a lot of Toronto blue. Just like when you saw an Islander game against the Rangers, there's a lot of Ranger blue. It's it's just a fact. Um, but Matthews, I think, like, you know, it, it was I actually had him that day to score a goal in that game. That was like one of my bets of the day for Beeson.com. Um, and every time against Buffalo, I think that was his 19th goal against the Sabres in 26 games in his career. So he lights up Buffalo. Uh the, the Maple Leafs fans do a great job taking over the Key Bank Center. Well, I heard um, I, I heard that what? that's because people can afford to go to the game in well, Buffalo yeah. because apparently tickets in Toronto are so overly priced that you don't get that loud, rowdy crowd. You get that corporate crowd at the game. Same thing, Rangers um, Islanders. Same exact. Yeah, thing. It's, you get that corporate crowd at the games in Toronto, and that that kills um, the noise in the building. I'll give the Bruins a little love and a little shout out, and I'll give Tampa the same love and a little and and shout out on that. Those buildings get very loud. Like the fans in Boston and, and Tampa Bay are are two of the louder buildings that you can play at um, in the NHL. I mean, Philly's like that when they're good, right? But those those two places really really show up. And even last year in the Frozen Four, Tampa Bay, like that building was sold to the brim, and it was very loud. I mean, they they love hockey down in that area. They really do. I guess Tampa has helped them because they've just been so freaking good. But it's yeah. it's pretty awesome how good some of those those buildings can really get their crowds going i've actually never been to tampa before um definitely it's a place i want to get to yeah I've never unreal been. place it's I've, an uh, awesome place i've always wanted to catch a game there but i've just never gotten around to it um but yeah matthews is there a chance you think he gets 65 for sure right like he can get a hat trick in the next game i think he could even oh. get 70 i don't think that's out of the question yet how many ga how many games are left for matthews toronto has just give me a second here they have yes nashville is very left. loud that's another building in the playoffs where the ceiling yeah. it feels like it's coming off nine games for toronto left yeah i it's would think it's going to be hard for matthews to get yeah. 10 goals in nine games but i could easily see 65 i could easily mm -hmm. see 65 because you're right 
you never know. Like you're, he could score two hat tricks in the next nine games. Easily. And then all of a sudden, all he needs is a, is a, is a two goal. You know, it's, it's never out of the question for him because he's definitely the most pure scorer in the NHL. Like he's the mm -hmm. most pure goal scorer in the NHL. I feel like pasta's right there with him, but I think Matthews is, is, is got that slight edge on pasta. I went on Sportsnet yesterday on the radio and I said that Matthews to me is already the best American goal scorer ever. I don't know if that's a crazy thing to say because he's only played like 500 plus games, but and I'm not yeah, taking any credit away. What? It's a crazy thing to say. Is yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, the pace, the pace he's scoring at is absurd. It's absurd. Right. But what makes greats great is that they do is it the, for a very long period of time. The maintenance. And, yeah. and there's never like a drop off. Like Ovi is going to end up with, you know, how many goals this year? Vic, can you look up and and see um and see what Ovi has and how many games left that they have? Because like I'm just saying, like you got to do it for a very long time before you're mm -hmm. in that conversation. It, it it looks like he's heading there, right? It really does. I mean, you can't deny it, but I need to see it long over the long over the yeah. long stretch. Like we've just seen guys have done it for the long stretch, so I I want to see him do it for another four or five years at this pace. Um, and so Ovi's got 26 goals in 70, 70 games. Like, yeah, Ovi will probably get to 30 this year, which is, which is remarkable for where he was at. Also, Matthews is the ninth player to ever get 60 goals twice. And Ovechkin only did it once the year he had 65. I don't know if that like says much, but still a pretty big accomplishment. You know, for... uh, listen, of course it is. It's a massive accomplishment. Massive. Yeah. And Matthews I mean, technically like hasn't even entered his prime yet. No, I think forwards He's just now getting into it pretty much. Forwards go a little earlier. And you've got to remember these kids who come in at 18, like your your clock goes is a little it starts a little earlier. You know, like you're in at 18 years old. It's it's not like you came in at 21 and then it's like, OK, it took you five years. Like he's been playing in the NHL long enough that like he he's at the top of his game. Now, now he's got to sustain it. I mean, that's Wait, just. Ely just... is saying why so much hate towards Matthews on social media? Is it because he's American? What what hate do we see towards Matthews? I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily see hate yeah. for Austin Matthews. I mean, I, I cer you certainly won't, you won't hear me hating on him. You know, Bogglebug is saying I would take Pasto over Matthews ten out of ten. Wow. Interesting. Uh, D. Lee also said, "Is Matthews taken over as best American-born player from?" Well, let me not, ask not you. Yet. Yet. Let me ask you. Yeah. Yeah. One spot left on your team, Matthews or Pasta? Well, we're it, talking it, centerman, right? Like versus winger. Yeah, which is yeah. hard. It's hard. Um, take that. Take that out of the equation. Let's say it's your thirteenth yeah. forward. Your thirteenth forward. Man, that's fucking tough. Um, Have an opinion. I know. I. I Part of me wants to say, I, I'm leaning Matthews. I'm leaning Matthews. I just think okay. he's, he's. I don't really what? care how you're leaning. I care yeah. who you. I'm saying Matthews. I'm gonna say Matthews. Okay. I'm gonna okay. say Matthews over Pasta. Why you? Why? I just think he's dangerous from more places on the ice than than Pasta might be. I think Matthews can score. Not that Pasta can't score from anywhere, but I think Matthews can surprise goalies in so many different ways. Where Pasta, I think, is like a bigger threat with the one timer. Um, maybe needs to be. I don't want to say teed up more than Matthews does. I think Matthews can create more goals on his own than Pasta can just because his shot, like his snapshot is a little bit more dangerous than Pasta's snapshot. I feel like Pasta has the better one-timer and is more of maybe a power play threat. But at five on five, shooting the puck, I think Matthews, I feel like, is the better goal scorer. Yeah, but I, mean, I could I be wrong. Take, like, I could be wrong. I would take Matthews as well. I yeah. disagree with the fact that you think that that – Matthews is more of a threat from or from more places in the offensive zone that I disagree with. Mm -hmm. Pasta can score from fucking anywhere. Yeah, I mean the the chances that Pasta creates and he could score from in so many different ways. Line rush, one timer. His Matthews one timer is better. Yeah, I, I said his one timer is better. Saying I disagree with you saying that Matthews can score from more places. That I don't agree with. I like Matthews. Because a he's a centerman, I think Why? he's a better. We, we put skater. that aside. You said thirteen forward. Well, it's, it's still his position. But I'm we, I thought put you it, put that aside from the argument, though. Well, I you wasn't said, saying put it aside. Thirteen forward. I, I understand that, but they All still right, are right. a position. 
Okay, well, that's I what I said originally. I said it's a centerman versus a winger, and you basically put the kibosh on it. I think I like the way Matthews competes along the walls better, although Pasta does play with some jam. I just, I like, I would take Matthews. I think he's just, just a hair above. Yeah. I, I just think um, it's, it's, uh, he's just a little bit of a better player, but, but, you know, at the end of the day and, and uh, we'll see. I mean, but, but, but that's who I would take. So um, I, mean, I guess that leads us into our MVP talks, right? Yeah. Who do you got? So, to me, it's it's obviously I think not just to me, but to everyone, it's it's five names. It's Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid. I think Panarin next, and then Pasternak should be five. I think those are the five that we should talk about. What you already have something to say? I'm listening. It's hard. To, it's hard to knock what McKinnon and Kucherov have done. Um, you know, obviously, right now, if you look at the points total. Um, McKinnon is leading the race with 127 Kucherov right behind him with 126 McDavid right there with 125. And I cannot believe McDavid has climbed his way back into this race. He has 96 assists four away from hundred, which is fucking insane. Um, but the other two Panarin and Pasternak, the difference with them is that I think, and, and Colby, I know you don't like this side of the argument, but I think the team matters. And the Rangers being the best team in the NHL when I don't think anyone would have put them there. And Panarin has led them the entire way, has not steered off once this season since the first game of the year. Panarin has been playing lights out to this point. And the fact that he has the Rangers where they are in the standings, to me, has 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 to help his argument for MVP. Pasternak, similar thing. You look at Boston's roster in the offseason, they lose Bergeron, they lose Krejci, um, you know, they don't really have a ton of strength through the middle. He's a winger putting up a hundred points. The next guy in the roster is Marshan with 63 points. Pasternak has 102, 39 more points than the next guy. Yeah, like, but you can make the same argument in Tampa with Kucherov, who's got like 130 in point, who's only yeah, got 81. So for sure, but Boston's spread, been consistent the entire year with how good they've been. The, the spread of points that that to me that that argument doesn't really you don't do think it that matters. Me. That doesn't do it for me, no. That's a big argument with Kucherov, though, is that he has like 40 points more than the next guy. I mean, again, those arguments don't necessarily do it for me. I, I don't really care what the spread is between him and the next player. In the same breath, you're telling me so-and-so is only good because of the players that plays around him, and then you're saying, well, look how many more points he has. So I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Look, to me... Mm -hmm. There's one guy who deserves to be the MVP, and it's Nathan McKinnon. I, I don't, I don't think it's close this year. I know there's three players that have an ungodly amount of points, but McKinnon's going to be the only one that gets 50 goals and has 140 points. I don't okay? know, man. Panarin, Panarin six goals away from 50. But I don't. And Pop is 45. I don't, I don't put Panarin in that. I don't put. I, to me, it's a three horse race. It's McKinnon. It's Kucherov and it's McDavid. And then there's there's your other guys underneath. There's Pasta. Um, there's um uh, who, who are we just there's Matthews, there's the Panarin, those guys, right? So mm -hmm. um geez, my brain is working slow today. But no, no, you're you, good. Look you, at the you look at the spread on McKinnon, he's gonna get 50 goals, he's gonna have 85 assists. He might have 50, 54, 55 goals. I mean, he, he needs three to 50, and then he's probably good for another three or four more, right? So he's probably going to end with 50, between 50 and 55 goals and like 85 to 90 assists. I mean, I just like the spread on that. Look, 100 assists, which McDavid most likely will get, is, is really, you know, a crazy accomplishment. But mm -hmm. I think goals get weighted a little bit more. I think the way McKinnon's team is playing, um, you know, which he's leading the charge, I think deserves a lot of credit, a lot of shout out. Um, I think the way McKinnon does it, how he competes, I, I just, and then listen, they all compete, but it just looks a little different when McKinnon does it. So I, I think McKinnon number one, and then I think it's probably <laughs> a toss up and there we go. There's my yep. bubbles. Um, it's probably a toss up for number two with McDavid and, you know, Kucherov, I think McDavid's been chasing and he closed the gap, which is obviously incredible what he's been able to do. But at the end of the day, like to me, it's McKinnon and it's 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 all McKinnon. Like I think McKinnon should I think all the first place votes should go to McKinnon. And then I think a split of second place votes between McDavid 
and Kucherov. And that and that's just how I see it this year. So you don't give Panarin any love at all, huh? I just don't think that he's on the same planet of caliber as those other guys. And and look, a lot of nights when there's a lot of hockey on, you're mm-hmm. at a Rangers game. So yeah. I'm not able to watch the Rangers because I got to mm-hmm. watch other games. Generally speaking, I've always liked watching the Rangers. Like, yeah. obviously, when they were rebuilding, not as much. But I watched them a, a decent amount because of Quinny. You know, Quinny being a longtime coach of mine and me wanting to see him be successful. Before mm-hmm. that, my best friend was on that team briefly, you know, for a year or two before he got bought out. So I've seen a lot of Ranger hockey and I've been around the organization. So I, I still do watch a good amount of them. Like, I really do. And I just don't think Panarin is 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 on that level. I just don't. I, I think that he doesn't bring that type of electricity um, to his team. Like, I think... I think um, that's that's just why I think that I wouldn't put him in the know, conversation man. with those three. I, I think so. Here's the debate, right? Like, here's where the root of it stems from. Is it a conversation of the best player in the NHL or the most valuable guy to their team? What? I'm seeing what? if I can get a bubble. Oh, a, a bubble? Thumb bubble. But that's but that's what everyone argues, right? Because to, to, to my argument, when you look at the teams, what Panarin and Pasta have done. Rangers and Bruins are ahead of the Avalanche, ahead of the Lightning, and ahead of the Oilers. Like they've elevated their teams to have stronger seasons. And that's why I think they're a little bit more valuable. Like the Rangers are not the number one team in the NHL without Panarin. And the Bruins, sure as shit, are not fourth in the NHL without Pasternak. I'm not saying Colorado, Edmonton, and Tampa, you know, wouldn't be where like they are if you take away McKinney. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say, how does that argument no, no. but how does that argument yeah. not apply to Colorado? And how does that argument not apply to Tampa, who didn't have no, their but goal I'm saying, for three months? And but I'm saying the Rangers and Bruins are the better teams. Like if if Tampa was or if Colorado was the number one team in the NHL right now, McKinnon, no doubt. No, but no. we're sitting here saying that we think Tampa is going to going to probably run through a round or two of the playoffs. And yeah, but this is all based on the regular mean, season. I get it. I get it. But I'm just saying, like, we're talking about mm-hmm. who who's the most valuable to their team. Like, I think know, Panarin getting the Rangers to first place in the NHL if they win the President's Trophy, I think that should boost his uh, campaign for MVP. Of course, it it should, it, it should get yeah. taken into account. I mean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But like the, I think the team stats matter for this. Trophy. Yeah, I just don't see the same level of uh, of electricity from Panarin that I that I see well, from th- those other guys. I, I agree with you. I think physically speaking, when you watch, at least f- for sure, when you watch McDavid and McKinnon, it's a different league. I think those two are physically just above everyone else. But this is that you know you don't think Kucherov, be- not physically, not physically. Like I I don't see Kucherov and see like oh my god that guy has you know, flashing speed or the hardest shot or like anything that stands out in that way. Where oh, McKinnon geez, is- the, I, I just, I think the playmaking ability from Kucherov when he gets the puck, the way he yeah, dictates. Is, yeah. Is, I, that's not, a, that's not I mean, a physical thing. Well, the I mean, his puck skills and his vision and his ability with his stick. I mean, I, I think, I, I think Kucherov and Panarin are actually on the same wavelength when it comes to playmaking. No, I disagree with you, but okay. That's, that's fine. But I think you, you can't put McDavid. Do people in the McDavid. chat do people in the chat think Panarin and Kucherov are the same level? I think Kucherov's better for sure. But as far as what they look like when you watch them, it's not like one has blazing speed. You know, it's not like one is so much stronger than the other. You know, where McKinnon and McDavid, they're faster, they're stronger, their shots are harder. That's like a fact when you watch them. Right. It's a different thing in your vision. No, I mean Kucherov. I mean, I think I think Panarin and Kucherov can wire the puck. Yeah, I, I think those guys. I think those guys can wire the puck. The only part of this that I will agree with you on, because the rest mm-hmm. of it I think is stupid, is the skating. Like, there's a different gear that Panarin. Yeah. I mean, excuse me, that that um, McDavid and McKinnon can get to, albeit it looks different. There's just a gear that those two can go to. That maybe Kale McCarr is the only other guy in the NHL that can go to that gear. Like, there's just a gear. I it's agree. like a Ferrari gear that, like, no up. other car yeah. has. Um, yeah. It's, it's so, so look, we'll see how it shakes out. There's still mm-hmm. more hockey to be played. These guys need to keep rolling along. We can't, we can't do this show without talking about Jonathan Quick um, and and the milestone that he hit. 
uh, with the New York Rangers, becoming the number one uh, leader in wins by an American goalie with 392. Um, yep. There are 13 goalies in the history with 400 wins. Um, and so uh, this is a pretty big deal for, for Jonathan Quick. I mean, it really is. He's kind of revived his career this year. Um, and, and it's been pretty awesome to see. Very cool. And you could see how much the guys in the room loved him from everything that, you know, came out from that game on Saturday against Arizona. Um, Jonathan Quick has been, he's so professional. Like even when, you know, I think it was Molly and Vince and, uh, Colin and, and Pete that asked him the questions after the game, he doesn't even talk about the milestone. Um, all Jonathan Quick cares about is winning. And I'm sure at some point, you know, he'll come out to the media and talk about how special this is when, He's out of it. I think sometimes when you're in it, not that I've experienced this ever, it's hard to really appreciate what you're going through. Um, but it's just it's just been really cool to see Jonathan Quick come into his childhood favorite team and really, you know, step up and and save this team at points too. Because Shesterkin did not look good for like a two month stretch there. And if Jonathan Quick was not on this team, God knows what the Rangers look like right now. What do you see in the chat? It looks like you're reading some. Well, I don't think he's going to get to 400 this year, as Jeremiah no, put in the chat. Not. I think next year he will. Um, yeah. Look, I'm happy with what what he's been able to do. I'm, I'm, you know, again revived his year. He bounced around with with Columbus for a few hours last year, and then he ends up in Vegas. But he doesn't really, he doesn't really play. They don't resign. There's also not enough games to get to 400 this year. Yeah. So, I mean, what I would say about Quick is, I do think he cares about this award. I do think he he's. Well, obviously he cares. I'm saying like he has, um, he just hasn't come out and said anything. You're, about it. you're saying all he cares about is winning. Yeah. I mean, of course he's won a couple of cups. He's won a shitload of everything. Um, but at the end of the day, like this is a big deal. Number one for your country in a long history of goaltending. Um, I think it, it's really incredible. You saw all these American players and non American players putting it on their, their social media the last couple of days, because yeah. there's just so much respect for him. Um, he did save the Rangers at times this year while Shesterkin was struggling, probably helped pull Shesterkin out of his little rut and his funk that he was in. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, good, good for quickie. Good to see Connecticut guy playing for the Rangers. It doesn't usually work out when that type of shit happens. And, um, this has been a great example of a guy kind of going to his hometown team and it working. The question that I have for you because I was looking up American goaltending stats, right? And like, I was thinking like, oh, like, I guess maybe John Van Beesbrook would be the next best goalie or something like that. And like, I started looking up stats of goalies in the NHL, like American goaltending historically, it's not been great. Like what no. we're seeing right now with like Hellebuck and Demko and all these guys, obviously like quick came first, but like now Fowler and Augustine that are college goaltenders that look like they're going to be stars. Um, American the history of American goaltending is not great so like do you have quick as like the number one American goalie of all time like I know he has the wins but like do you have him as number one all time Ooh. Um, some of the other names Johnny some of the other names that yeah. I wrote down and drop names in the chat too if mm -hmm. you're uh if, if you're if you want to kind of be heard on this but um Ryan Miller John Van Beesbrook yeah. Mike Richter Tom Barrasso a guy who's way up the charts with numbers is Craig Anderson. A guy who's in the top of the charts is Tim Thomas, even though Tim Thomas had um, had a, had sort of a, a shorter career that started later. Tim Thomas was freakishly good, right? So, like, where, where does he stack? Big E's asking who's second in wins all time. Uh, Ryan Miller's second in wins yeah. all time, right? Yeah, he is. I, I think it's got to be quick, though. Like you think yeah. about the hardware too. He's got three cups, um, yeah. has a con Smythe. Uh, I think a no, not a silver medal. Um, I, I think it's got to be quick when it comes to you know everything that he's decorated in, and he's still going right. So it's not like his career is ending, you know, tomorrow. He's got a whole another year to continue to build his legacy, and uh, you know I think when it's all said and done, how, how can you deny that it's quick? Like Ryan Miller never won a cup, you know, like. It's hard to argue that, right? Uh, How many I, did Van Beesbrook win a cup? Um, I wasn't old enough to like remember watching him. I know Barrasso, I think, had the two in Pittsburgh, right? Um, someone older than me in the chat might be able to help here. This is where my uh 
my youth hurts me. Um, I think I'd have quick number one. I really yeah. do. I'm just so curious. Like, what do people think of Tim Thomas? Like, I have a skewed view of Tim Thomas just because I played with him and and you know saw him basically carry the Bruins to to a cup, a team mm-hmm. that I was a part of. So um, I'm a little skewed there. I also played with Craig Anderson. He was like one of my favorite guys I ever played with. Uh, he was such a such a cool like such an interesting guy to be around and and you know I goalies are always a little different but I really liked Craig and and the last couple of years I would love when he would come to town to Chicago because I I would like get get love getting together with him and just like hearing about um hearing about what's what's going on so I'll be honest too like my goalie history it's it's not great like yeah. I. I, I mean, and when I think of goaltenders, like from our childhood, I think of Bro and Wah, I think of Dominic Hasek, um, I think of Chris Osgood, Cujo. Wow. Like, I don't really have a lot of American goaltenders like in my mind. Like, I remember Tom Barrasso; he was a Penguin, mm-hmm. and from the movie Sudden Death with Jean Claude Van Damme, which you probably have never seen, never um, heard of. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a movie that was around centered around the NHL. Well, an NHL hockey game at the old Igloo in Pittsburgh was Jean-Claude Van Damme where there was like a bomb in the building and what? like he like suits up in Tom Barrasso's pads and he like goes out for like a period um and it was called Sudden Death like to- I mean this movie's pr- probably from the 90s I <laughs> there has to be people in the chat that remember the movie Sudden Death help me out here Jeremiah Pizza Sports guy one of you guys have to have seen that movie well, Pizza Sports um, Guy just said, I'm agreeing with Johnny way too much today. It's scaring me. Uh, so I don't know if that's a good or bad thing for, for me or for him, I guess. Um, state of survival. State of survival. Tim Thomas doesn't really count. Thomas was good because he was the last goaltender to play stand-up goaltending, and all the players had no idea how to play against that. I don't know. That's, 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 that's a crazy fuck. take. Come on. Yeah, you, can't, you can't say it doesn't count. I mean, yeah. And, and here's the other thing I will say about that state of survival. Tim Thomas refused to go down in practice. Like you'd go down on him in a, in practice <laughs> in the playoffs and like you just shoot low and like he just literally would not go down. He'd just like flash a leg, throw a kick, throw up throw a, his paddle, never would go down. You'd go to the other end against Tuca and like if you could score on Tuca in practice, you should seriously have kept the puck. Like that's how hard Tuca tried in practice. So, um you know, it there we go. D. Ely says sudden death is awesome. Jeremiah, yeah. I've seen sudden death. We mm-hmm. I, I knew we would have um we would have that. And a New York Marine said historical tending is tough to evaluate because it's such a team stat position. I agree with that. Like you see, like John Van Beesbrook with an under 900 save percentage and almost three goals against, but like he played in a time where like guys were just lighting up the goal, like the equipment, the pads, like it just wasn't the same. <laughs> Um, getting a couple of funny comments in the chat here, but uh, Rodolfo Lasperi said in 20 years it will be Devin Levi. I actually don't know. I think, uh, let me just look quick. Connor Hellebuck, first off, De- Devin Levi is yeah. Canadian, is he? Yes, yeah, you're right, you're right, he is. Um, De- Devin he just, Levi is Canadian, college. yeah, he just played in college. Um, I know, I think for Con- sure. Connor Hellebuck has 270 right now, so he's 122 behind quick. He might be able to catch that. Yeah, I think he will. Yeah, I mean, he gets, what, three 40-win seasons, three more 40-win seasons. That's doable for him, right? And he's going to play okay. more than that. So could be Hellebuck all, by the time it's done. done. I, love all the, I love all the, seven, the, the, the sudden death talk. Johnny, you have homework. You've got to yeah, watch. You've got to watch the movie um, "Sudden Death." I will. All right, let's keep um, let, let's keep the Rangers conversation yep. going because I know you've been sitting there under your your uh-huh. your camera, like you know, trying oh, to hide your excitement. For it. So how about for this? It. But, I texted uh, Johnny. Uh, let's 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 first give Chris Kreider his flowers. Three hundred goals. Adam Fox three hundred points. It was all the same game. Like so many milestones in one game here for the Rangers on Saturday, and then now to the bread and butter. Alexi Lafreniere, first career hat trick, five point game. Kobe, proceed. Well, first off, D. Ely, sudden death was 1995, same year I got married, still married. 
that's good. Good for you. That's that's Congrats. that's a long run. I I, yeah. I hope uh, I hope we can make it that long over here at the Cohen residence. But uh, here's uh, here's the first goal of the game for for your boy Loff. Good shot. Strong side. Aggressive. Um, you know, look, five point night. He's going to need a lot of five point nights if he's ever going to get to even 80 points because he he scores and he'll he'll go six games with one point and then in three games he'll get 10 points like he seems to be a pretty streaky guy um look he's not afraid to go play in the third circle like he's not afraid to go between the hash marks to try to score goals obviously you play against Arizona you score eight goals like guys are going to get points he gets his empty netter good for Lavi putting him out at the end of the game he's still not a hundred point scorer like he's just not a hundred point score. And here's what I'm going to say. Like you can't forget now he's playing on a line with who Johnny, who does he play Vincent, with Vincent Trocek and Artemi Panarin playing with stars right now. Like I would make the argument that he, maybe he's going to have one more. What happens when Panarin leaves? Like, is he ready to carry that team offensively? Zibanejad's not getting any younger. Like, I'm just wondering, like you think he's mm -hmm. going to evolve into this hundred point player. I think that he's probably going to get what 55 points this year. It'll be a stretch. Dude, but it's, it's all even strength points because he's not good enough to be on their power play. It's all even strength. He's it's not good crazy. enough to be on their power play. He is. He just, they're just afraid. So then why is he it. not on their top power play? <laughs> they're just afraid to change it. I I'm praying for the day where it happens, but like, but like, who are you taking off? Yeah. The I don't know. Play? Maybe, maybe Vinny, but he's been playing great. Like it's so I tough. Mean, uh, so I, I'm just saying he's not good enough for their first power play. Like he is he good not? enough. He is. But good no, enough. he's not. If he was, he'd be on it. So it's so hard to debate this because like there, there's no way to beat. The, there's there's no way to beat you not, in this. Why is he not on the first power play? Because there because you don't fix what's not broken. Their power play has been great. Capo said only hundred point scorers were born rich. <laughs> so <laughs> um, also. <laughs> I Are his parents wealthy? Because that 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 will probably get him to 100 points. I don't know, but uh, I just want to say this. So Colby fails looking, to see Loff is being held back by Brett. <laughs> it's true. What what the are the guy who that, has how many assists? Panarin gets his first 100 point season playing on a line with Lafreniere. Is that a coincidence? So you don't Couldn't think do it's the other, you don't Couldn't think do it's the pain. other so you don't think it's the other way around? The fact that teams are no, constantly I, worried about. The guy who's been a star in the league his whole career versus the guy who's just finally found his footing. But you think it's from him? You think it's laughed? Come I on. think it's a mix of both. I'm, Don't be a fucking I'm, idiot. I'm, I'm half kidding. I'm half okay. kidding. Okay, be I, fully I think it's, kidding because otherwise you're an idiot. No, I think it's a mix of both. I think Lafreniere has elevated Panarin's game. I think Panarin's elevated Lafreniere's game. But also, credit to Vinny Trocheck. He's been playing unfucking believable and he's elevated the two of them too. But let me just ask you this. In the last 20 games, how many points do you think Alexi Lafreniere has? I have no idea. Just guess. I, I, I Just tell me how many points he's had. 21. Over a point a game. 11 goals, 10 assists, 21 points. In what the about the 20 20? games before that? Plus, plus this, is, I'm saying, this is from when I tweeted this 100-point player thing. But what about the games before that? The 20 before that? I didn't tweet before that, so it doesn't matter. I sparked oh, this. Oh, okay. Got I it. I sparked this. You're a big but, narrative guy. You only want the facts that fit your narrative. Yeah, obviously, isn't that what everyone wants when you when you? So he's going to be a 55 point guy this year. It's like the auto Senators have won five games in a row. If it was a 90, it was a, it was a 90 game season, they're making the playoffs. <laughs> what about all the, the the streaks he had where he had one point over eight games, one point over six games? I mean, come on, we two could play this game, Johnny. Don't that was cherry a different guy. That was a different guy. Oh. I didn't tweet then. I didn't tweet oh, okay. then. Okay. Okay. Since the hundred point player thing, he's taken off. He's on fire. Um, but all jokes aside, uh, that's funny. Olivia, Johnny, the dumb meme of you. This is that conversation. Uh, Laugh needs to come on the show. Pizza sports guy. That'll never happen. I wish. Laugh actually um, hates Johnny. That's the best part of this whole <laughs> thing. He literally, he won't talk to him in the locker room. He doesn't give him the time of day. And then when I hear from other guys in their locker room, they say that they see he sees Johnny on Twitter doing this whole <laughs> thing and is like mortified by it. That's like the best part of this whole thing. Uh, well, I think he'd rather have someone build him up than is it better to be like, oh, this guy sucks. He's a bust. Like I've been just trying to hype the kid up since he's coming to the league. You know? 
All right, but let's move on. Um, we got eight games on tonight. What? Nothing. Go ahead. Just I'm okay. laughing at eight, Pizza Sports guys tweet. To, eight to games on this. tonight. Um, a lot of good ones. Florida versus Toronto. Uh, Islanders versus Philadelphia. Detroit versus Tampa Bay. Then you look at the West. You got Los Angeles Kings and Winnipeg. Not many great games in the West. A lot of good games in the East tonight. Uh, and Colby, do you want to talk about tonight's bet of the day or bet oh, of the yeah, night? We got uh, we got Jeremiah today with our bet of the day um, from Betway, our our name sponsor and and our our big Betway segment that we always have. And you got to remember, with Betway, they're still running this great promotion: free bet, two hundred dollars. You see the QR code on the screen right now. So create the account, use this QR code on the screen. All right, and that will sign you automatically up to recoup a $200 bonus if you lose your first bet. So if you bet 500, you'll get 200 back. You bet 200, you'll get 200 back. I think you guys understand it. So you can continue to use that money to bet if you lose. So you basically get a free bet, okay? This is on Betway, so download their app, go to their website. It's offer the offer is only available outside of Ontario. Again, we'll see if we can get a nice Ontario promotion at some point. So maybe our guy Vic uh, can actually get back in the betting game. And what Jeremiah likes for our bet of the day, plus the, he likes the Leafs at plus 105 tonight. Um, they think Mitch oh, Marner's dogs. back. They've been playing some decent hockey. And... You know, this is a game that's probably more meaningful to Toronto than it is Florida, although Florida's been pretty marginal the last 10 or 11 games. They're definitely dealing with um, some adversity right now, which is probably good for them, although you never want to see uh, a team that peaked early struggling and kind of limping their win way into playoffs because I don't really think it's a, a flip to switch. So uh, we like Toronto today, plus 105 on the money line. That's our Betway bet of the day. Make sure you use Betway if you can. Um, and if you are interested and you need us to send you the QR code or send you the offer, you can always hit us in the chat. You can always hit Johnny in his DMs on, on Twitter. He'll get back to you with that. Or you can find Vic on social media. He'll get you the QR code. But make sure you sign up with Betway, create that account, and use that QR code. Take advantage of the free two hundred dollars. Like I, I don't, I just see, I don't see how that's not a no brainer, right? Put a, mm -hmm. put a big parlay in tonight. Sprinkle, sprinkle, and sprinkle. Eight games, a lot of action to pick from. So uh, should be a fun night of hockey. I think that's going to wrap up today's show. Kobe, you were a trooper for getting through today. I know you had a long weekend, and I know you were pretty tired, but uh, way to battle through. Don't kiss Thanks my for... ass, okay? It, it's unnecessary. All right, fuck you, Kobe. You suck today. Um, and uh, thanks to the chat for chiming in all morning. Thanks to Vic. And uh, any final thoughts before I wrap it up? All right. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 9 a.m. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli. Fantasy updates from Brock Sagan and a daily live show at noon Eastern Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content.